Hi, everybody. This is Holly from Holly's Pandorium, and I'm so glad we're back. I have with me today a person that is new to me. This is Kat Ward. Say hello, Kat. Hello. And she's going to tell us what brought her into the paranormal, what introduced her to the paranormal. And we'll find out some interesting things we didn't know before. So go ahead, Kat, and tell us what it was that brought you into the paranormal. Thank you, Holly, for having me on. It's nice to meet you. Absolutely. Um, so I am Canadian. I'm originally from New Brunswick, which is a, a province on the east coast of Canada, and I'm currently living in the Ottawa Valley in Ontario. Uh, but the most significant paranormal experience that I've had happens to be my first one that I remember, and it's always uh, it's still in in my mind. Um, so when I grew up in a small town called Dieppe, New Brunswick, and my parents and I lived on the third floor of a three-story apartment building. And this apartment building was very, very old. Um, when it was first built, they used to have a coal furnace in the basement. Uh, so that pretty much tells you how old the building is. I don't know the exact year, but it was pretty old. Uh, by the time we moved in, though, it had electric heat. But it was still really, it was an old, creepy building. So when you first walk into the apartment, we had the living room and then my parents' bedroom. And then you move to the left. There was a dining room and the washroom. You go left some more. And it was a large kitchen. And then my bedroom. So my bedroom and my parents' bedrooms were at different ends of the apartment building. Okay. And I used to have, um, my dad used to call them night terrors, uh, uh -huh. living in that apartment building. And I used to, sorry, it's, it's even the memory now, like, you know, I'm in, I'm in my mid-50s. And this happened when I was like between five and 13, it still gets to me. Wow. Um, I had an encounter with a hat man, but he was the short one. He was about four feet tall. Wow. Um, yeah. So he would, he would never, he never took notice of me. He would just kind of walk around my room like he was on a mission, but he was about four feet tall, uh, black as black could be, you know, the typical bolero hat and the cloak. Couldn't see any facial features or anything, but it scared the crap out of me every time. Now, I don't think it was every night that it happened, but it was often enough while we lived there that um, I can't even tell you how many times I saw him. But every, each time I would have the covers just, just below my eyes, hoping that he wasn't going to notice me. And I was always thinking to myself, don't move, don't breathe, don't say anything, because I didn't want him to see me. And um, there was one time my father, I had a great big walk-in closet in my, in my bedroom. And there was one day my father took me into the closet and he never really believed in the paranormal or anything. And he says, see, kiddo, there's nothing here at night that isn't here during the daytime. That kind of backfired on him because I looked at him with big eyes and I said, you mean he's here in the daytime too? And he's just like, that's not what he was going for. He was trying to, to tell me that there's nothing there. It's just my imagination. Right. Um, so I was afraid of my bedroom in the daytime too for the longest time. It was just like I said, it was just a very creepy old apartment building. But I do have fond memories because I had a really good childhood. My parents were always great, um, lots of family, you know. But that that hat man just terrified me, and I never really told anybody other than my parents because I would scream bloody murder in the middle of the night, screaming the the man in the closet, the man in the closet. So my parents would come running, uh, and of course he disappeared. They they never saw him. So fast forward to a, quite a few years later, um, I was a paranormal investigator then, and I was listening to a paranormal podcast, and they were talking about the hat man. Now, I didn't know this entity that I used to see as a child actually had a name and other people saw him. Right. It was just fascinating to me. But the hat man that their guest was talking about was a tall one. So I emailed the hosts afterwards and said, hey, look, I had the same experience, but my hat man was shorter. So one of the hosts sent me this link to a Facebook um, uh, Facebook page. Uh, sorry, not Facebook. It was YouTube. Um, this guy used to see the short hat man as well as a child, and he went to reenact it. So it just kind of looked like a mannequin that he put the Bolero hat on and everything. Wow. And when he turned the lights out or dimmed them to show the, the, the effects, for a split second, all the memories came flooding back, the terror, all those feelings oh came back for a split 
split second going, that's exactly, exactly what I used to see as a child. And wow. That fascinated me because I never told anyone about it. And that was the first time that I heard of anybody else. Sure. Who sure. Saw it. So I was intrigued, but, um, and now as an adult, he kind of haunts my memories. I'm not afraid of him anymore. I'm more curious. The apartment building has since been torn down, okay. but I would love to go back home to investigate, but I still have dreams about that apartment and, and uh, the hat man. And I think of him almost daily now to this day, wondering why was he there? What was he? Who was he? Right. Um, you know, it's just, so listening to all these paranormal podcasts made me realize that people are having the same experiences globally. Right. And it, and it's really refreshing because I had no idea, like I said, that this entity had a name. So um, right. it, it was nice to know. Well, and, and honestly, that is such a very specific image that you're talking about without being able to link that to a television program or a childhood story. It's really kind of incredible that so many people have had this likening experience that is so specific because you're not the first person I've heard of that has seen a hat man, but a shorter hat man. Yeah. So, I mean, and what does, I'm curious about it too. What does it mean and how come so many people are having it? And, and it makes me wonder as, as an investigator also, is it due to a specific type of an event? Is that what draws this entity to it? Is it death? Is it fear? Is it, you know, what's the attraction and why do they show up? And why did you feel as a kid for a while that you could hide from it and other times you, you didn't and you screamed? Yeah. Because clearly exactly. those were different. You know, if you felt like he didn't see you, you didn't scream. But clearly there were times when you felt seen because, oh no, he sees me. And then you would end up screaming. I mean, those are important details that make me wonder, yep. you know, because I've heard in here in the Pacific Northwest where I'm at, people tend to see what they call a slender man, which is also a hat man. Mm -hmm. And it's in the woods, not inside a home. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that makes me curious. What is that? What is that from? And where does that come from? So, yep. yeah, this is something that I would love to get some more information on. So I'm fascinated. So after growing up with this thing haunting you, at what age did you actually start to decide, wait a minute, this is paranormal. I need to do something else about this. When when did that change for you that you decided the paranormal was something you wanted to be a part of? Well, growing up, um, strange things like that always fascinated me and, and and it kind of felt normal after a while like my mother uh, she had abilities she could communicate with her grandfather uh, mentally and he didn't even have to be in the same building um i my dreams would come true um just a, a bunch of things like that and being born and raised french roman catholic um my parents were very very supportive they weren't telling me that, you know, uh, the devil's coming to me or um, it's my imagination. Uh, although my father tried to rationalize and try to explain what I was experiencing because he mm -hmm. didn't believe in it in the, in the beginning. He, right. he does kind of now. Uh, but my mother, she always believed in that, even though she was very, very religious. Um, but growing up, they never made me feel odd about it. Um, all my friends growing up, they used to call me the the weird girl that liked ghosts. Well, I still am, <laughs> but I embraced yeah. my weirdness a long time ago, so I don't right. care. Right. Um, so it's always been fascinating what else is out there, even as a child. I mean, we there was one instance that we had gone to, um, oh, I can't remember the name of it, Fort uh, Lewisburg in Nova Scotia. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, an old, I think it was built 1800. I can't remember the years. Anyway, so um, my parents and I had gone one summer and we were, we had a tour of the, the old fort and it was pretty much closing time in one of the buildings that we went into. And uh, so we had a tour guide, but we were the only people in the building and they were kind of renovating it, just trying to bring it back, you know, trying to fix, you know, it's an, it's an old fort. So they're trying right. to renovate it as best they could. Sure. So I'm, I'm looking down the hall and the tour guide says, 
what are you doing? I said, I hear footsteps down the hall. And she jokingly says, oh, that's the ghost that we have in the building here, thinking that it's going to deter me. And I'm like, ghost? And I start walking down the hall and my parents are like, no, don't go. <laughs> um, you know, she's like, there's nobody else in the building, honey. You know, we're yeah. the only ones here. All the the um, construction people are gone. Um, but yeah, it never really, other than the hat man scaring me as a child, as I got older, I was more and more intrigued to find out why is this happening? Right. And it's just fascinating how so many people, like I said, experience the same things. And it's a global thing. It's not just right. North America. Exactly. That's very true. Yeah. That's very true. So you started to become an investigator of the paranormal. What is that like for you? And what do you do nowadays? So when we moved, um, my husband and kids and I moved to the Ottawa Valley. Uh, can't remember. It was so many years ago. Um, a friend of mine messaged me on Facebook and said, there's this uh, woman named Katie Turner who's looking to start a paranormal team. Uh, and she wants to have like a meet and greet. And she says, I know you like that kind of thing. So why don't you message her? And I thought, yeah, okay. So uh, we had a great big um, meet, meet and greet at our local Tim Hortons. It's a very popular uh, coffee shop and donuts here in Canada. Nice. I don't know if you have that in the States. Uh, I don't think so. If it, <laughs> if we do, it, there might be some on the East Coast, but there's none where I'm at. Okay, yeah. So we just, a bunch of us met there, and um, I decided, yeah, I'm going to join the group. And we started investigating, and then I had to move away for three years. My husband's military, so we had to, we got posted. And we came back to our the Ottawa Valley, so uh, I joined the group again. Uh, since COVID, we haven't, COVID, we hardly did anything at all. And mm -hmm. the past couple of years, it's just, I'm kind of on hiatus right now because my work schedule um, doesn't seem to coincide with the teams right now. Right. Uh, so they get to go on all these fun investigations and I have to work. Oh, um, gotcha. I, I would love to book some time off, but I, I can't, I can't justify because they, they, they kind of ask, you know, is it medical or personal? And it's like, well, I want to go on an investigation and they'd probably be like, oh, great. Yeah. How do you explain <laughs> that one? Exactly. Yeah. 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 I get it. Yeah, but I've been with the team for quite a few years now, and um, uh, the very first uh, investigation that we had was amazing. It was at an older gentleman's home. I think it was 94 at the time. He was a widower, and so the team, we, we went, and, you know, my very first investigation, so I didn't really know what to do, um, watching all those ghost shows, you know, but I knew it wasn't 100% like on the ghost shows. Mm -hmm. So uh, the lead investigator and I are, are in the main bedroom and the rest of the team is in the spare bedroom next to that. So we knew where everyone was. So we asked if there's anybody here, could you please give us like three knocks? We mm -hmm. got three knocks and we thought, okay, I started to think, well, maybe it was the group messing with us, but no, it came right. from the opposite end of the room compared to where the bedroom was, where the rest of the team was. Right. And every time we asked for a specific amount of knocks, it happened. We were giddy like kids in a candy shop. It was amazing. I bet. I bet. Oh, yeah. I mean, from my very first investigation to be able to get something like that was just amazing. And then I was hooked after that. Oh, heck yeah. That'll do it. Yep. That'll do it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Wow, that is incredible. So of all the investigations or the experiences that you've been on, can you think of one that was really set you back that made you wonder about? Um, yeah, there was this one that we had. It was at a, a local tattoo shop. It was in a very old building. Um, the owner claimed that there was lots of activity because there were apartments upstairs as well. And people upstairs would say to the owner, because they knew each other, uh, what were you doing last night at such and such an hour? And she's like, what are you talking about? There was no one in the shop. She's no, we, we heard things moving around, people running. Uh, it sounded like there was somebody downstairs in the shop. And she would go into the shop in the morning, and she would find wet footprints, like little, little footprints. Oh, wow. So uh, yeah, so the team we, we went to investigate, we're just setting up and I was in charge of setting up the, um, the video cameras. So I had the cables in my hands because I was running the cables and we had to tape them down to make sure nobody tripped over them. And the lead investigator, Katie, comes up to me and she says, are you OK? And I shook my head. No. And she says, something tried to go through you. And I went and I just shook my head. Yes, that I knew. Oh. 
And she says, you need, I didn't normally when I do investigations, I keep selenite and hematite in my pockets. Right. Uh, for protection and grounding. Right. I hadn't even had a chance to do that yet because we're just setting up. Right. So she says, you need to get your crystals. You need to get it now. I just dropped the cables at my feet and I ran for my case. And normally I just have like one piece of each. I had, had three pieces of selenite, <laughs> grabbed all the hematite I had, shoved them in my pockets. And right. then I had to really compose myself and ground myself because uh, Katie is also a very talented psychic. Okay. Um, she's amazing. So she said, something tried to go through you. And I said, yeah, I know. You uh, felt it. I felt it. I did not like it one bit. Uh, okay. It's never happened before or since. So it sound, when she was talking to me, it sounded like she was way at the other end of the hall. She sounded so far. Oh, wow. I was still in my body, but I kind of wasn't at the same time. It was the strangest experience. So after I got my crystals, I had to ground myself and did some prayers, called on my mom who had passed away several years ago, you know, for protection. Right. Um, and I said, well, I can't, I can't really partake in the investigation right now because I really have to focus on whatever that was right. to keep it away. So I just sat at the cameras just to watch the screens, just to see what was happening. And there was so many orbs flying around me. And wow. I, and I had to, I, I spoke out loud and said, whatever or whoever you were, if you're trying to communicate, you do not touch me. You right. do not take over my body. That is not how it's going to happen. Right. And, I, and I described the devices that we had. I said, you can, tr you communicate with us through these devices. It's not okay to touch me or, or, you know, try to communicate through me. Um, I, like I said, I wasn't having that, but I really had to focus all of my attention during the entire investigation. And um, when it was all said and done, uh, we were all driving home and Katie says, where did you go? And then I explained to her, I said, I don't know. I said, you sounded so distant, like I was in my body, but I wasn't. It was the strangest thing I had ever experienced. And I don't want to do that again. <laughs> wow. That sounds incredible. So she did she actually feel no, no cameras were hooked up so nobody actually saw what happened to you apparently but she, she actually saw felt oh, she did okay yeah okay yeah wow that's incredible though but you say nothing has ever happened like that since no um right. I keep my shields up all the time <laughs> it's just in an I'm so used to doing it it's an innate thing right. but I think just at that time I was focusing on getting on setting up the equipment that I really didn't have time to put my shields up so um, I, I think that's what happened and, and why it tried to uh, take me over. But then once I realized what was going on, it's like, uh-uh. I was lucky, I think. Yeah. No, but that's your story is an excellent reminder to everybody that's on a ghost team is it's never too soon to prepare yourself before you go in a building because you really don't know what you're walking into until you're there. So what yeah. we do now is... Uh, Katie will say a prayer for us, a protection prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll uh, use sage uh, mm -hmm. before entering any building now. And we'll do the same when we're done. And right. uh, we verbally say that you're not allowed to follow us. So, um, yeah, it's lesson That's learned. an important <laughs> one. That's a yes. super important one that you're not allowed yes. to come home with us and follow us. It's, yeah. I'm glad you said that, too, because that's something that we do here as well. Good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's it's surprising how quickly you learn <laughs> and oh, even blessing the equipment just to keep things from tampering with them as well sometimes yeah. is necessary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's incredible. That's incredible. So what do you guys do before an investigation to prepare for one? How do you prepare someone that comes to you and says, I think my house is haunted? Can you talk about that? Yeah. So we usually send uh, a couple people uh, either in person or Zoom or however. Um, there's forms that we get them to fill out. Um, and we just ask them, uh, like if we go to their house, we'll just say, okay, describe in detail what goes on. Show us the areas that it happens in. Uh, mainly with the main investigator, uh, Katie, I like to go in blind, uh, not knowing exactly what's going on because I, I like to be able to feel what's going on. Um, but yeah, we usually get them to tell us what's going on, what time of day, because hauntings can happen day or night. Um, Very it's, true. it's amazing how so many people think that it only happens at night. No, it's daytime as well. Right. Um, 
So we just, um, they just tell us how, what happens. We get them to fill out the forms. Um, we have to ask the uncomfortable questions like, are you on medications? Do you have mental illnesses? Um, have you ever had thoughts of suicide? Things like that. They're very, very uncomfortable questions to ask, but we need to ask right. um, for everyone's safety. And there have been a couple times where we realize that, no, it's not actually um, paranormal. Uh, mm -hmm. You need to uh, continue taking your medication. Right. Um, it doesn't happen very often, at least in my experience. Um, but yeah, they're, I really don't like asking those questions. But like I said, it, it, you have to ask. Yeah. No, you do. You yeah. do. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. And typically, how many people go out on an investigation with your team? We started out, I think there was nine of us. And it's just kind of fizzled out over the years. Um, now we are uh, five. Uh, there's, mm. we were four, but we, we have a new investigator. I actually haven't met her yet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just cause of, I, I work and I just can't seem to, to go with the girls, but we're all girls now. Yeah. And, um, it's, uh, we have a really great team. We work well together. Nice. That is awesome. So do you go to events or do any trainings together or have you in the past? No, um, Katie and April have gone to the States before to, oh, I can't remember where it was, to some events. Um, but in Canada, we don't have a whole lot of events here like you do in the U.S. Oh, really? Yeah, it's really sad. <laughs> oh, interesting. Yeah. We, we're starting to have a little bit more, like in the area, there's like, they, they call it metaphysical. Um, sure. Uh, you know, um, I can't remember the wording, but shows. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can meet psychics you can get uh, reiki done you, know, you can buy crystals that sort of thing but it's not a huge thing like in the states and um, i'm hoping that's going to start changing yeah because we're kind of fortunate here that way we it does depend by city because some cities tend to be more open to it i guess is a good yeah. way to put it um but yeah i know of different things that happen in most states and you know, like New York, for example, there's quite a bit that goes on there that you can attend. And it mm -hmm. it can be very normal specific where it's mostly about dog man or Bigfoot yep. or UFO and or ghosts. Um, and we tend to do a little bit of that, too, where I'm at in the Pacific Northwest. We have things mm -hmm. that are paranormal specific or a little bit of everything. So, yeah, but it's mm -hmm. it's it's a learning experience because there's a lot of people that have things that they go through and at least they're willing to talk about it. And that's, that's why I do this podcast because I'm trying to encourage more people to talk about more things. Cause a lot of us have experiences that we don't think to share. Or we don't feel like we can. And so it's important to continue to share what happens. Definitely. I feel um, it's not as much of a taboo now. It still kind of is, but ever since we started having shows like most haunted, um, Oh, so many shows that you can mention. I find ever since those shows have been on TV, yes, they're a business and they're in the entertainment uh, industry. And but some of the the investigations, they are what they like. The, how can I word that? The investigations aren't one hundred percent accurate. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because when they do their investigations for the shows, they can be there for weeks at a time. Right, but. And they compacted into like an hour show. Right. Um, but I find ever since those shows, uh, there's a lot more people talking about what they've experienced and people want to have people go into their homes because they say, hey, I'm having something happening here. Can you tell me what it is and uh, right. help me get rid of it? Exactly. Well, and I think that's a fair point because I think a lot of it is, again, like you said, some of the TV shows, maybe they're for entertainment, but you can tell that there are some things that are consistent that ring true or certain oh, yeah. events that happen. Um, mm -hmm. We just went on a preliminary investigation with my team the other day. And I'm glad that you mentioned that ghosts can be during the day because this family has seen day and night things oh, wow. going on. And so that's a very valid point that the supernational does not just pick after a certain time. Uh, okay, now we can haunt, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. it's day and night. It's, yeah. it's not just nighttime. And I think that was one of the most important things that 
that I tried to share is that not all of this is bad, evil, or scary, like television presents it to be. Um, a lot of times things are are just visiting. They're not there in a malevolent fashion. They're just there for whatever the reasons are. And finding out what that is is half the fun. Yeah, yeah. we had an investigation once where the uh, parents were convinced that there was a demon in their house. Uh, they got pushed down some stairs. Oh. I think their daughter was two years old or between two and four, I can't re quite remember. She would get knocked over, toys, uh, the little girl's toys were being played with. And come to find out, there was a fire in that house a few years before. And a woman and her dog passed away. And it was the dog that was in the house. Oh. So I had, once, I, when, once they were telling us all this information, I looked at them and I said, when you get feel like you're getting pushed down the stairs, where do you feel this? And they said, on their legs. And I said, would it kind of be like when a dog is going by you in the stairs and kind of bumps you? And they're like, yeah. And yeah, we, we did the investigation and there was a dog there uh, playing with the child's toys, you know, especially the balls, uh, oh, sure. playing with playing with the little girl. You know, the little girl didn't seem like she was phased, but the mother right. was convinced it was a demon and it wasn't. No. That's an excellent example, Kat, because I noticed there's a pattern that people tend to always assume it's evil yep. that that's that's so common that it's evil or that or that it's a demon and those incidences and in my case i've been a psychic since i was a little kid and i'm mm -hmm. 60 and it's like evil i have encountered but it's incredibly rare it's yes. incredibly rare mm -hmm. and 99.9 .9 of the time it's just an entity. It's just something that has a, a living energy and it's just doing what it thinks is normal. It's not doing anything to be yucky or mm -hmm. scary and finding out why something is there and getting the story behind the story is the whole point of the investigation. It's just to determine exactly. what's going on. And, you know, if the dog died there, then that's probably where its spirits hanging out. That completely yep. makes sense. I'm so glad that you thought to ask those questions because <laughs> people always are afraid, unfortunately. And I, I hope that more, more information will become more common that the public will not be so terrified. I had a, I had an incident where an ice machine was giving people terrible frights. They'd moved into a new apartment yeah. and they heard noises they weren't used to. And mm -hmm thought for sure that there was a demon around the house and it it was literally the ice maker yep making noise and and i get you know they were just afraid because they had a baby and they didn't want anything happening to the baby and it would startle them and they didn't yep. notice the noise when they were moving in and yeah so yep. i get it i mean there there can be very rational explanations for things as well oh yeah I'm not saying that there's no demons and there's no negative entities, right. but it's just most of the time that's not the case, at least in my experience. And and I do know cardinals, um, archbishops, uh, sisters who do, they take care of the nasty cases that I don't even want to look at because um, like that's above my pay grade. I don't right. want to do, I don't want to do those, but right. they will. And uh, they said, yeah, it's not as common as people think. And right. I've actually told people before that if your cupboard doors are opening and closing or something's trying to, like, your keys are getting thrown at you or whatever, it's not always a bad thing. It's just there's an entity trying to communicate with you. They see you and they're yeah. they're so frustrated. You know, it's like, how would you like it if, if uh, I walked into your house and I'm talking to you? And you're totally ignoring me because you don't know I'm there. And I'm like, hey, hey, like, Holly, hello. And, and after a while, you're going to be like, oh, for the love of God, you know, <laughs> I'm over here. Right. Uh, that that does happen more often than people realize. So I have a funny thing to share with you that I I shared once before, but I got to share it again. Sure. So spirits that are hanging out that have a regular form of communication or some kind of connection with the living actually brag to each other when they do. <laughs> so when you have a relative or just someone assigned to you as a spirit guide and you know when they move a pen or you they can leave you a penny or a dime or whatever it is some kind of trinket that you, connects the dots for you and mm. you go oh that's my aunt so-and-so or that's my dad or that you know whatever the contact is mm -hmm. or that's that lady that always watches out for me they love that that is like whoa 
they know I'm here and we connect and that they brag about that. But likewise, there's a lot of residual energy and, and spirits that are hanging out. That's their biggest complaint. They've been trying to tell you something for years, usually. Yep. And, and you're never thinking it's them. You never think it's a spirit. You never think it's the beyond. It's always you forgot or you lost this or that, or, you know, someone's pulling a prank on you and they, the, the incidences of them not being considered makes them very annoyed, but it, they doesn't make them evil. <laughs> no, no. I yeah. can just picture spirits doing a face palm. Like, right. Oh, yes. For the love of Murphy. Like what? <laughs> right. <laughs> What's it going to take? Yeah. What do I got? What's a ghost got to do? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and I, and I agree. I mean, what indeed, what do they have to do to get our attention? Sometimes yeah. it's got to be frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just love it though. I love it that they try so hard. That's amazing because if it's important, they keep trying, you know, they, they want to be seen and heard and acknowledged. I could just picture like, you know, when, the, cause they need to build up an awful lot of energy to be able to move something, especially to fly it across the room. So Heck yeah. I could just, I could just picture them being so frustrated and going, God, and there's, it just fly, you know, yep. I could just picture them doing that. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, it's, I get it. I get it. I actually um, do seances normally on Sunday nights. Wow. And I can tell you that there's a lot of ghosts that just want to tell somebody their story. Yep. You know, it's, it's sometimes it's unfinished business and sometimes it's just, they're not ready to go all the way through the veil. They're, they're in the veil and that's kind of where they want to stay mm -hmm. and for whatever their reasons are. And so they just want someone to hear what happened or what's going on. Um, yep. I had an, an interesting one, a couple of ladies that were two peas in a pod, super close their whole life. And they died on the same day in different states. Mm -hmm. One of them had been sick and knew she was dying. And the other one just had a sudden death, but it took them, I've an extremely long time. I don't know how many in years, but they told me it took them a long time to find each other because neither one of them wanted to go all the way through the veil. They wanted to contact each other oh, and so they funny. finally found each other in the veil. Cause it took a long time for them to figure out, wait a minute, she's dead. No, no, no. What do you mean? She's dead. Oh no. And so it was one of those things where it literally miscommunication, like you missed a phone call or whatever. Yeah. And can yeah. you imagine being, unable to use a phone, unable to use a computer. Mm -hmm. So it's like going backwards in time for communication. How do you talk? How do yeah. you share information over long distances? And so it took these two spirits a really long time to find each other again. And when they finally did, they just have been hanging out and they're just super excited that they could see each other and talk and talk about oh. what happened. And, and so they, they came to my seance and were just giddy. They were so excited. We found each other. Oh my gosh. We were childhood best friends. And I love that. And th it was darling. And they were super fun to talk to. But, <laughs> you know, things happen. You know, the, we're, life happens. And uh, ghosts to me are a blast. I absolutely love them. They, yeah. they share some of the most amazing things. And I think it's important that we do the ghost investigations and try to help bridge the gap because there's a lot of unanswered questions and I'm very sure. fortunate that I get to hear some of that stuff. And I wish more people did because mm -hmm. it's important that we hear the rest of the story. Definitely. During investigations, that's always a, a question we ask, like, who are you? What's your story? Do you want us to, like, do you want us to, do you have a message for someone? Uh, we that's want a we're great here to question Yeah, we're here to listen to your story. That's excellent. That's excellent. So then when you do, I'm curious about the equipment that you use. How do you record what you collect when you do uh, an investigation? We have spirit boxes, which I'm not a big fan of just because the white noise really gives me headaches. Okay. Um, we have ovulus. That probably is my favorite one. Yes, you pre-program words in it, but you're not pre-programming the machine to give you the answers that you're looking for. It's just you know, you program so many words and we've had a lot of, uh, one investigation in particular, uh, there was a house fire and they, they had to rebuild the house mm -hmm. and 
it said um, fire, kitchen, wire. And we looked at the owners because they were with us and we were like, uh, does this mean anything to you? They're like, yeah, that's where the fire started was in the kitchen. It was a started from the wires. It's like, oh, okay. Nice. So it's, yeah, it's just, it's, you get giddy whenever you get oh, validation. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And well, we and have, that's, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. No, and then we have cameras. We have uh, April. She goes around and she'll take hundreds and hundreds of pictures. Uh, she just disappears and she just goes around wherever she feels that she has to go. And um, it's just she gets some pretty good pictures. Um, and we also have like the the, the uh, video recorders, obviously. Um, but yeah, um, millimeters, you know, the, 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 the usuals. Mm -hmm. So then... If somebody wanted to get a hold of your ghost team, how would they reach you guys? Uh, we do have a website. So the name of the team is, it's a long one, Canadian Supernatural Research Society here in the Ottawa Valley in Ontario. Okay. Uh, there's a website. Uh, there's also a Facebook group. Uh, just reach out to us there and uh, send us a message. That's awesome. I love that. And now I have to ask an interesting question. Sure. Do you guys charge people for investigations? Never. Yeah, we don't hear either. And I, I find that very interesting that people are concerned of what it might cost. And it's like, no, you don't understand. We felt like this is a calling. We're doing this to help people. Yep. And there's never a charge. And secondly, one of the next things I just answer for people is we're not going to show up in the Ghostbusters mobile with the siren on and scare <laughs> your, you, you and your neighbors. Yeah, it's going to be done very discreetly when we show yes. up. Um because people have these weird conceptions of what on earth might happen when a ghost team shows up and it's very respectful and very calmly done. It's not, it just looks like you got friends coming to hang out. Yeah. Right. Uh, one of my biggest complaints though, as an investigator is we've had a lot of clients treat us as if we're their own personal circus, their own personal TV show. And they've what? invited, they invite friends over and they're drinking beer. Like, yeah, we have teams that are going to inv uh, investigate my home. And we're like, no, no, no. The owner can stay. Everybody else has to leave. And there was one uh, case in particular um, when we had to tell the friends to leave. They're like, well, can we watch through the window? It's like, no, you can't watch through the window. You're <laughs> going to contaminate any evidence of pictures. Like, we might think there's a face in the window, and it's really you. Oh, so my. it's like, please respect your paranormal teams. Or, you know, you show up, and they're watching ghost shows on TV. And it's like, we really like these shows. Well, yeah, we do, too, you know, but... It's just sometimes they can be disrespectful, you know, and they th they they don't take it seriously. And the one that we had to tell people not to look in the windows, we had to put garbage bags in the windows to make sure that they're not going to contaminate it. Wow. And um, sh the woman, I believe, had already a team that was there and, and got rid of them. But it came back because she thought it was a cool thing in a way. And... Once I looked at her and said, Boy. your babies are being terrified. You can't have this happen anymore. You, you, it's, you're, you're the owner of this home. You have to tell them to leave and not to come back. Like, right. yes, we'll sage for you. Um, whatever, use holy water, whatever, however you want us to do this. We'll get rid of them <coughs> for you. But you can't will them back because that's what's going to happen. You have to tell them. So we, we, we told her, it's like, okay, you have to tell them you're not welcome. She's like, we're not welcome. I'm like, no, no, no. You need to use your mom voice. And, uh, you know, your babies are terrified because they were. And then, um, yeah, then the mother voice came out. And um, I don't, we never, uh, you know, we, we keep in touch every once in a while with, with our clients. Uh, we reach out to them to find out how things are going uh, and vice versa. They'll, they'll let us know. And uh, last I heard, this is several years ago, um, last I heard, everything was fine. Uh, it didn't come back. That's incredible. I have, I have yet to encounter somebody that thought it wasn't a form of entertainment. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Wow. They don't take but, it serious a lot of times. Well, and I think that might be part of the, the response is that it's not really real or it's not a big deal. And, and they treat it more like an entertainment. I get that. Yep. But the fact that she had somebody, actually affecting her family members in an adverse way, then it's not a joke. Maybe that was her way of coping with it is to try and make light of it. Maybe it was something she was more afraid of than she was willing to admit, perhaps. Maybe. 
But it was really interesting too, during that particular investigation, our um, psychic uh, said that one of the mirrors, um, I don't remember if it was an old mirror or what, but it was acting as a portal. And it was really neat because when I went up to the mirror and I, you know, when you're too close to an electric fence, mm -hmm. that the, the, you can feel the energy. That's what I was getting the from the mirror. Yeah. Wow. That's what I was getting from the mirror. I had never seen that before. It was very fascinating. And um, so uh, she closed the, the portal and then uh, it would just, it just felt like a regular mirror after that. See, that's something I've always been fascinated with is when does the mirror become not a mirror or more yep. than a mirror? Yeah. That's an excellent question. Hmm. Got to look into that. Right? Hmm. Yeah, because supposedly any mirror can be converted into something else. Yeah. That's amazing. So have you ever gone out on an investigation from a Ouija board by chance? Using a Ouija board? Yeah, from someone having used a Ouija board and oh. brought something through. <laughs> we always ask our clients, have you ever used a Ouija board? Do you dabble in anything? And it's always no. But then... And, and we always say, okay, and like, we're not judging. We need to know all of this information. Right. And nine times out of 10, you find a Ouija board in the closet. Because we ask them, is there any place that's off limits in your home? And they say, no, you can look wherever you want. It's like, okay, good. And, you know, you open up closet door and there's a Ouija board. And then we just kind of turn around. It's like, really? It's like, yeah, I, I dabbled. It's like, why didn't you tell us that before? You didn't think we we're going to find out? Like, Right. Um, so, yeah, it ha it does happen. I think um, I personally don't like Ouija boards. Um, growing up French Roman Catholic, my mother was very like, I, I'm always, I'm more spiritual. I'm not really uh, religious, but right. my mother was very, very religious, but mm -hmm. she also understood about uh, the paranormal. And she always told me, do not play with uh, the Ouija board. So that was kind of ingrained in me. Like, uh, don't, don't mess around with it. Right. But I won't personally, but, if you're going to use it, make sure you understand how it's like a tool. It's not really a toy, although it's sold as one. Correct. Know, know how to use it and know how to properly end the game. Right. And that's, I'm very glad you said that because that has been my understanding as well, yeah. is that it's not so much mm -hmm. people using it. It's what's happened when they're done. They don't end yeah. up closing it off. And it is a tool. It I is. mean, just like there's many ways to pay for your dinner. You can use a credit card. You can use a check, yep. a debit card or cash. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of ways to reach the other side. There's a lot of ways to connect with the paranormal. Yep. And especially with people that have passed away. And so using a Ouija board just for fun may seem like a great idea, but unless you use it properly and the game doesn't give you all the instructions Mm. As it should. I wish there was a disclaimer with them that says, by the way, yeah, when you're done, make sure that you close everything off. Yeah. People don't realize because it's not like Monopoly or, you know, no. most board games don't have anything else that can happen when they're put away yeah. back in the box. I jokingly say you have to be like uh, 19 years old to be able to uh, drink, 18 here in Canada mm -hmm. to vote, but you can be eight years old to summon a demon. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, oh, <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> oh, I'm laughing. It's not, it's not exactly funny, but it kind of is. Oh my yeah. gosh. No, but that's true. That's yeah. very true. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Kat. I love that. <laughs> yeah. We, wow. we also find humor in the paranormal. Like we, we laugh a lot during investigations or we'll break into song, you know, we'll see a shadow and then we'll start singing me and my shadow, you know, uh, <laughs> Yeah. I love it. <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. You got to have a sense of humor. Yeah, you do. At least I yeah. think so. Yes, definitely. Well, is there any other stories that you would like to share with me tonight about something that you've done in an investigation or the paranormal? Uh, there's one other story that I like to tell you. When we moved back to the Ottawa Valley five years ago, and we bought this, the house that we're in um, mm -hmm. that winter, it was 2018. Uh, it snowed every day. We had a lot of, a lot of snow and we don't use our front door. Um, we put the dog bed there and we have a couple of cats too. And so we have a sign on the front, please use side door. So my daughter and I were sitting in the living room one day watching TV. Well, it was nighttime. Curtains were still open and my daughter thought she saw somebody walk to the front door with a, a light source, like a lantern or a mm -hmm. flashlight or something. I, I didn't see them go there, but I saw them leave. 
But before they left, it sounded like somebody tried to rip the door off the, off its hinges. So we have the inside door, and then we have the storm door on the outside. Sure. And the storm door, everything's locked, right? Sure. So we hear that that big loud noise, and even the animals are like on alert. They're looking and they're growling. And I thought, okay, who who the heck is here? And I right. know it was a Thursday night because that's when we get our flyers delivered. So I thought, oh, maybe it's the person delivering the flyers. Okay. So I open the inside door and the outside door is ajar just a little bit. And it's just like, okay. And I look down, I don't see any footprints. It's still snowing. There should have been footprints. So I looked at my daughter and, and I'm like, well, maybe the house is shifting. She goes, no, mom, she's into, she's, she's a firm believer and right. into the paranormal as well. And I'm like, well, maybe it's this. And she goes, no, cause I didn't want to freak her out. Right. Right. And I'm like, yeah, I know. And I had saged not too long before. And I said, now you guys understand why I sage the house on every once in a while, because whatever that was trying to get in, couldn't get in. Right. Um, you know, if it was somebody, like I said, you'd have seen the footprints in the snow and there was nothing. Wow. Yeah. I believe in saging too. I know people that have very mixed emotions about saging and, and it's appropriate usage, but for whatever it is, it's definitely a repellent that I have found very useful. Yep. And it's definitely a way to kind of clean things out. Yeah. And rinse away things as is salt. Yeah. I was just going to say, I like the salt as well. Yeah. Salt has been a favorite of mine as well. Um, but that's fascinating. I mean, and that's another one too, is I love it when animals respond because we don't always give animals credit for being able to sense things that we mm -hmm. don't. You know, we know they hear better than we do. We know they yeah. smell better than we do. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, their eyesight is far sharper than ours. And I pay attention now. I've learned to pay much too. more attention to animals and how they respond to what's on around them. Mm -hmm. I had a, a little mini Dotson that very often would be my first indication that something was near my house that I wasn't used to being around because she would see things. And she would kind of go walk and follow them or let me know. Yeah. You know, she'd pause, just stare at something, or she would make a noise. And I'd know, oh, okay, there's something trying trying to walk around here. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's amazing how sharp animals can be when it comes oh, to the paranormal. It sure is. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. So is there anything that you're really curious about the paranormal these days that has you curious or wondering mm -hmm. about more? Well, when I first got into the uh, paranormal, because I have a podcast as well called Paranormal Heart Podcast, I used to think paranormal was just ghosts, but I quickly learned I was sorely <laughs> misinformed because mm -hmm. it could be Bigfoot, you know, cryptids, aliens. Um, there's so many topics. Yes. Um, obviously, the hat man is my biggest. I, I want to know. It just it, it, because I had that encounter as a child. I, I'm just, I have this thirst for knowledge to find out what it is. Mm -hmm. And I just find most people don't really have a real answer other than they've had these experiences and they're tell, they're talking about it. But right. um, I did have a psychic tell me that that per one particular um, hat man that I saw was a, um, it, it was there to protect me. It was a guardian. And I thought, but she didn't know anything else other than that. I was just like, oh, that's kind of interesting. But um yeah, and cryptids, my favorite is, um, you know, the dog man, uh, mm -hmm. Lou you know, any any um, lichen, it just fascinates me. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, the Bigfoot ghost, anything paranormal just really fascinates me and I want to know more. Right. Is there anything that you're really proud of in your research on the paranormal? Oh, that's a good one. I think just being able to go to people's homes and you've probably experienced this too. It kind of gives you PTSD sometimes to some people. We've seen families split because one parent has had an, a paranormal encounter and the other one hasn't and they don't believe them. And it yeah. causes so much stress so they don't want to talk about it. And it causes, uh, they, they'll just be quiet even though they're still having the activity. So right. when we go into someone's home, for example, or even a business, and tell them that you're not crazy. We're here to help you figure out what's going on, right. how to get rid of it, get answers for you. And right. I think I could probably say that I'm proud that 
we're helping people know that they're not alone. Right. I love that. So I can, I can say honestly that it wasn't until I turned 50 years old and I met my current husband that I found someone that completely believed me. Um, he was raised like I was with someone who was open to the paranormal that mm -hmm. didn't poo poo it away. And I was also raised Roman Catholic also. Mm -hmm. um, but my mom was always very open and she had had experiences herself. And I don't know if that was more of why she was, but I'm grateful that she was. And so my current husband, that's how he was raised. His mom had gone to psychics forever and had taken him with and conversations about ghosts and the unknown was open in his home. Mm -hmm. And so I know there's a lot of people that have suffered because if you don't experience the paranormal, it's very easy to disregard it. Yep. And so I encourage people, if you're, if you're suffering with the paranormal situation, find someone that understands and talk, call up a, a podcast, call a group, that does investigations and just to talk to a friendly voice because you deserve mm -hmm. it. Yep. You deserve to be heard and you deserve to be believed. It's okay to talk about the paranormal. That's why I do this podcast. Same. Cause it yeah. is. And I, I'm so glad you brought that up because it's amazing to me how many people have a story. It may be one story. It may be just one moment in time, but it impacts their entire life. It does. A lot of people have things happen as children. They stuff it away and then something will trigger it. And it is a PTSD. It is. It is a traumatic event and it does affect how you feel and your ability to relax and your ability to, to be feeling safe anywhere mm -hmm. in particular. Um, I think that's another conversation, but it, it it's kind of fascinating. It's like we almost need our own synonym to explain paranormal post-traumatic stress. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and I, you know, we can giggle about it, but it, I do believe it's a real thing because yep. that's, it's so strange to have an event happen and have no answers. Why did this happen? Why is this, how come that keeps going on and why me? Why can I see it? How come nobody else is seeing it? These are very important questions. And, I know for myself, even being a psychic, I second guess myself plenty. Did I really hear that? Did I yeah. really see that? Did I really feel nauseous? Did I really feel something bump my leg or touch my hand or mm -hmm. move my hair or whatever? Did I really see that light or that shadow? There's enough self-criticism. We criticize ourselves and analyze what happens enough. And to have nobody yeah. believe you, that's rough. It is. So everybody deserves to be heard and be believed. I, I'm a firm advocate of that. We we need to be listened to. And sure, mm -hmm. you're still going to get up in the morning and go to your work and do your laundry and make your dinner. But yep. there's that one little part of your life that kind of haunts you, for lack of yeah. a better term. Yeah. You know? I've yeah, had a few guests where um, uh, they reached out to me and said, I need help. And they're in the States or wherever. And I'll say, okay, I'll, I'm going to find some people that can help you. And I reach out to the, my, the paranormal community of my friends and say, Hey, anybody in this location can help this person. And right. then, yep, there's always, there's usually somebody that I know in a person's area that can help them right. either remotely or they can actually go to their house right. and help them. So that's another good one. For the general public, anyone watching or listening to this podcast, believe it or not, there are people in the paranormal that can help you over the phone. They can help yep. you over a computer. You don't have to necessarily have someone come to your house to help you. Exactly. It's there's, And that's something that I actually do. It's called remote viewing. Yep. And we can actually help get answers and help you to get some peace of mind right where you're at. So... Thank you for bringing that up. That's a great one because I haven't You're really welcome. talked about that much on my podcast. Yeah. And it's good to know. And I've always thought we almost need a paranormal yellow pages like the phone book used to have. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and call it something funny like who are you going to call and like the original Ghostbuster movie. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then there's this whole huge list of people in your city that you can read. So maybe, maybe we need to do that, Kat. Maybe we need database. to make a phone book. Yep. Yep. Either a database on the internet or an actual book. Yeah. Something, right? Yep. Wouldn't that be fun? That would be. 
<laughs> and and would you would you call somebody who had paranormal PTSD PPTSD? Right. What would you call that? I know. It could be present paranormal stress syndrome. We'll have to talk about that. That could be yeah. in a whole other thing. We'll have to play with the phrases on that. That could be funny. We, we could coin a new a new phrase. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome so Kat please tell us again how can someone reach you for your podcast sure uh, I do have an email address called okay. paranormalheart13 at gmail.com okay. uh, my show gets re I have new episodes actually a new one released today uh, okay. new episodes get released on the second to last Sunday of each month at 5pm eastern standard time uh, I'm on Instagram uh, Twitter. Well, I still call it Twitter. I just can't <laughs> call it X. <laughs> I know it seems weird. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but on Instagram, I have um, uh, a linked link in a uh, link tree. Oh, jeepers. Yeah. All these new te technology things, you know, I know. <laughs> lots of platforms. huh? Yeah. So my show is uh, primarily released on Podbean and YouTube, YouTube, uh, YouTube. I'll ask the guest to give me a whole bunch of photos mm -hmm. and I'll put together a little video. Nice. Um, but it's also released on uh, Apple, uh, oh gee, iHeart, pretty much wherever you find podcasts. Nice. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah. Thank you so much for contacting me about this subject. And I'm so glad we got to talk. Me too. And I definitely want to have you come back and talk some more because Thank there's you. a lot to talk about. Definitely. definitely. And, I, and I invite you to be on my show as well. Oh, that would be fun. I would love yeah. to do that. Good. Well, this is Holly from Holly's Pandorium and Kat. And we're very glad that you joined us today. And whatever your paranormal situation is, we want to hear from you. So you have a wonderful afternoon or evening or morning. And we'll talk to you again soon. This is Holly saying goodbye for now. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs>